Hello, my name is Sean Anderson. Um, I'm going to be doing a question today with you called Aqua Limited. Aqua Limited is a water bottling company located in Paul in the Western Cape, and they bottle water, which they then sell um, to customers in the Greater Paul region. The question focuses on IS36 impairment, focuses on IS38 intangible assets, and there's a small amount of property, plant and equipment as well. There's quite a few assets in the question, both PP&E and intangible assets, and quite a lot of occurrences that happen in the question in terms of fires, floods, replacements, etc. So there's potentially quite a lot of impairment and impairment loss reversals. So when looking at the question, just focus on that. The required asks you to discuss for 20 marks the recognition of an intangible asset, um, the software costs, and 20 marks is quite a lot, so you need to give quite a bit of theory to answer that question. The second part of the question is vague. It's prepare the PBT note, which as you know, the PBT note is just a list of disclosable income and disclosable expenses. So what's quite tricky is to figure out what's going to go into that note. So when you read the question, just make sure you're thinking of the context of what you're having to do, i.e. prepare the PBT note. So think depreciation, amortization, impairment, impairment loss reversals. Think of those items that need to be disclosed in the PBT note. So the first video, we're going to focus on reading the question and thereafter we're going to unpack the solution. The company is called Aqua Limited. If you have a look at the introduction, they're a water bottling company located in Paul in the Western Cape. They obtain water from a spring owned by a farmer. They have a 20 year contract from the municipality to supply water to wine estates and they have a 28 February year rent. You can then see that there's a little table presented with some information about assets. So before we read that, we're going to pop down to the required of the question just to give us some context before we go any further. If you look at the required, there's two parts to the required. The first part, for 20 marks, discuss the recognition and initial measurement of the costs incurred on the new application software in the financial statements for year end 28 Feb 2020. Support your answer with relevant amounts. And it's for 20 marks. So this is a discussion question, specifically about IS38 and the possible recognition as an intangible asset of some computer application software. 20 marks is quite a lot for a theory question like this. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to unpack firstly the definitions of both an intangible asset and whether or not software costs can then be capitalized as an intangible asset in terms of IS36. And then do some calculations to show what you're going to do with the amounts that you calculate. 20 marks is going to require quite a lot of discussion. Work on approximately half a mark to one mark per valid point. The second part of the question is to prepare the PBT note for year end of 28 Feb 2020 as well. Again, also 25 marks. Now this required is quite vague and quite tricky. So you're gonna to have to stop and think about what needs to be disclosed in the PBT note. So as you're reading the question, don't focus on the PP&E note or the intangible asset note or anything like that. Focus primarily on what needs to be disclosed in the PBT note. Bearing in mind that we've already said that this question deals with tangible assets, PP&E, and possibly impairment. So straight away you can start thinking about PBT inclusions like depreciation, amortization, impairment, possible impairment reversals. So you know what you're looking for whilst reading the question. It's quite a tricky required, it's not straightforward, and there's no shortcuts here because the first part, as we said, is quite heavy for 20 marks, and then the second part is vague. So What's going to happen in the second part is you could miss some of your inclusions. So even if you can figure out impairment, 
depreciation, etc. It's very easy to miss something when it's very vague. Whereas if the, if the part two had said, prepare the following items to be included in the note, it would have been a lot easier, but it's quite vague. Um, and a vague required is always the risk that you miss something when answering the question. Again, 25 marks, you can see that it's going to be quite a lot, but probably a lot of calculations as well. Okay, so having looked at the required, we can now go back to the question and start reading through the detailed information. Okay, so let's focus on the little table that was presented first. So you can see there that there are five assets that are listed. There's a building, a bottling plant, electric pump, some computers and some software. So the first four of those items are all probably PP&E assets. The reason why I say probably is because remember buildings can sometimes be investment property as well. And we have a building here, but they clearly do tell you it's an admin building, in which case it must be a building that we are, we are occupying and therefore it is PP&E. But remember, if a building is held for capital appreciation purposes or to be leased out, then it is probably categorized as investment property. This is an admin building. We'll assume we are using it unless we're told otherwise. The second column is the dates. You can see that all the assets were acquired in 2015 on different dates. The next column is the use for life. Fairly standard years except for the electric pump, which you can see is kiloliters. In other words, chances are we are depreciating the electric pump over number of units as opposed to number of years, which is quite common for an asset that produces a product. It's quite common to use um, the number of units method as opposed to number of years. And then the last column is the cost of all the assets. Right, moving on to point number one. All non-current assets are measured at cost. So no problem there, quite normal. Depreciation amortization is calculated straight line method over the useful life, except for the pump. And remember, we expected this because we said kiloliters was given. And they tell you clearly it is done on the units of production method. So no problem there. All assets were available for use on the acquisition date and there's no residual values. So the asset information from an accounting point of view is quite straightforward. There's no complications like residual values, revaluations or anything like that. So, so far that information is quite straightforward. Right, let's move on now to the specifics of the assets. The admin building number two. The admin building is located near to the bottling plant on 31 August 2019. So process the date. When is 31 August 2019? Our year end is February 2020 and therefore 31 August 2019 is halfway through the current year. Whenever you see dates, just process when it is because chances are you're probably going to need it. So halfway through the year. A fire broke out on the second level of the building Firefighters were able to distinguish the fire before it could reach the other levels. The carrying amount of the building was written down to the recoverable amount of 3.6 million in the financial records on 31 August 29, what, 2019. So they are telling you very clearly there is an impairment loss. You're going to have to calculate the impairment loss. You don't know how much it is, but you don't have to work out the recoverable amount because that's being given to you. Now remember, in terms of IS-36, Impairment losses can arise in one of two situations. Either you can have an event which causes an impairment, which is exactly what's happened here. There was a fire and the acid is impaired. Therefore, we tested for impairment on that date. Or the second option in terms of IS-36 is that certain assets needed to be need to be tested for impairment every year. And we would normally do that at the end of the year. So goodwill, certain other intangible assets. Okay, so let's go back to this one. Repairs to the building commenced in September 2019 after the insurance company completed their investigation and they made a payment of 3 million. By 28 Feb 2020, which is year end, the admin building was restored to its original condition. So let's unpack this because this is a little bit complex. So halfway through the current year, we tested the building for impairment and we probably would conclude that it is impaired. Remember, when you impair an asset, the recoverable amount becomes the carrying amount going forward. 
So from 31 August, depreciation on the plant on the building will be based on the recoverable amount. So it'll be the 3.6 million over the remaining useful life at that point in time, depreciated for the balance of six months. Then by year end, we've restored the building to its original condition. So now we need to consider, is there a possible impairment loss reversal? So you've got an impairment loss after six months and a possible impairment loss reversal at year end. And the only reason why you've got that is because the sentence says the building was restored to its original condition. And that is significant. You're not given any amounts. You're not given a recoverable amount. So if you're not given a recoverable amount, you will then assume that the recoverable amount is the original historical carrying value had the building not been impaired in the first place. And that's always going to be the case for a reversal. You'll reverse to either the amount they give you or the lower of what the historical carrying value would have been. Right, let's move on to number three, the water bottling plant. The bottling plant is a two-story facility with the first level being underground. The second level hosts the computer which regulates all the processes of the water bottling plant. The plant did not incur any flood damage. Now the minute you see that ring an alarm bell, because up until now we haven't seen anything about flood damage. So we know there's something else coming. And in fact, they clearly tell you that it's in the point referring to the computer. So we'll look at that when we get down there. But it didn't incur any damage um, in the flood that occurred in 1 December 2019. So the water bottling plant, there's no funnies there. You're going to just depreciate it over its useful life um, straightforward. Electric pump number four. The computer which regulates the processes of the bottling plant provided the following information. And they give you the kiloliters that have been pumped. Now remember from the question, we said that the pump is being depreciated on the number of units method, specifically kiloliters. So here is the kiloliter information that's given. They've given you the kiloliters firstly from 1st of March to February 2019, which is the beginning of the current financial year. So that 22 million kiloliters is what's been pumped up until the start of the current year. So it's the accumulated depreciation, basically. Then they give you 1 March 2019 to 31 August 2019. Again, the fact that it's a date in the year must raise a little bit of an alarm bell. And then they give you from 1 September to end of the financial year. The minute you see the kiloliters or the number of units, whatever it is, in a question split, you know that possibly something is going to have happened to that asset during the course of the year. So that raises a bit of an alarm bell. And then we see it in the next paragraph. On 1 September, the computer indicated a decrease in the water pressure. On inspection of the pump, an inspection of the pump was carried out and it was found that the motor needed to be replaced. The new motor cost 800 and is expected to have a useful life of 35,000 kiloliters. Now remember from the question up above, we saw that the useful life of the pump was 70,000 kiloliters. So now what we're saying is the motor going forward is in fact only going to have a life of 35,000 kiloliters. We've possibly got a separate component. And if we read further, we see that Aqua was unaware of the shorter useful life of the motor and therefore did not identify the motor as a separate component on the initial recognition of the pump. But now they need to. So let's just unpack what IS 16 PPE says about separate components. What it basically says is if you have a component that needs to be replaced at regular intervals, you need to identify it separately and depreciate it accordingly. And even if you don't identify it at initial recognition as a separate component, when it subsequently is replaced, you need to de-recognize the original component and now recognize the new component. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the implied cost of the, new, of the original component, depreciate that for the current year until 31 August, 
and then from 1 September we're going to replace that component with the new pump and depreciate that over its new useful life multiplied by the number of kilolitres. So let's just quickly look at the rest of the numbers to put it into perspective. So the original purchase price of the electric pump indicated that the motor accounted for 600,000 of the initial cost. So we didn't identify it separately originally, doesn't matter. What we will do now in the current year is we will depreciate it up until 31 August, work out the carrying value based on historical information, de-recognize it, and that carrying value will be written off as an impairment loss. We'll then put in the new component and depreciate that over 35,000 kiloliters, multiply by the number of kiloliters that that component did in the current year. Okay, so a little bit messy, but quite typical. And you did cover this in second year and third year, so you should be able to do this. Right, let's move on to number five. And remember, this is the one where we think there's information about the flood. So number five, the computer. On 1 December 2019, again, process the date. 1 December 2019, three months before the end of the financial year. A broken valve caused both the first and second level of the plant to flood. The regulating computer was severely damaged to such an extent that even the software could not be retrieved. The backup software was unfortunately destroyed in the fire in the admin building. So it's double whammy. They've lost, lost the software on the computer in the flood and the backup software was destroyed in the fire. So in a nutshell, they have no software. Aqua urgently needed to replace the computer. The Pole Water Board recently upgraded their regulating computers and Aqua was able to rent one of their old computers from 1 December 2019 for three months, which is until the end of the financial year. And just a quick point on the rental of the computers from Pole Water Board. That's a little IFRA 16 short-term lease. And remember, short-term leases also need to be disclosed. So don't miss that one. That would have been very easy to miss. You're going to have to disclose the lease installments as part of your PBT note as well. Very easy to miss because it's quite subtly put into the question, but it falls within the definition of a short-term lease from Aqua's perspective. Right, let's continue the next paragraph. On 15 December, Aqua purchased a new computer from Computer Limited at a cost of two million. Aqua contracted Comsoft, a software development company, to develop the new application software. Comsoft charges an hourly rate plus all travel costs. Aqua indicated that the project must be finished before 28 Feb 2020, in other words, year end, because that's when the rental computer needs to be returned. Aqua has the necessary funds to invest in more advanced software for the computers. This will enable the plant to operate more efficiently, thereby increasing future economic benefits. Comsoft commenced with the development of the software on 16 December and the following amounts were incurred for the year end of 28 Feb 2020. Now remember, when we did the introduction, we looked at the required of the question. And the first part of the, part of the required was to determine if the software will be able to be capitalized as an intangible asset. So you can see some of the information in this paragraph is the information you're going to use to determine if that software can be capitalized as an intangible asset. For example, the little sentence about necessary funds. That's important, okay? Operate more efficiently. That's important. Increasing future economic benefits. That's important. Okay, so all of those little sentences, little components of the sentence, you're going to use later on when answering part one of the question. Right, let's look at the costs now. So we've got the rental of the computer from Paul Waterboard. We've already said that that will be disclosed as part of the PBT note. And observe that the 50,000 is monthly. So it's three months, you're gonna be timesing it by three. The research cost to investigate the application software. From IS36, intangible, sorry, not IS36, from IS38, remember intangible assets that are developed internally are clearly split into a research and a development phase. And research expenses are always 
expensed. Okay, so again, you've got another item to be disclosed in the PBT note, the research costs. Then Aqua's internal development costs from December to February 2020, and they are separately identifiable. Again, the word separately identifiable, significant going forward. Then Comsoft has billed us for their time, 1.6 million, and the travel costs, 140,000. And then we also received the insurance payout from the company for computer software, computer hardware and software. Just want to pause on the insurance payout. So far in this question, we've got two insurance payouts. We've got one in respect of the admin building that was damaged in the fire. And we've now got the computer and software that was damaged in the flood. Remember that if you have an asset that is destroyed as a result of an abnormal event, then you must treat any insurance settlement separately from your treatment of the underlying item. So both the admin building and the computer and software will have possible impairment losses on those. We will write that off as an impairment loss and then we will separately deal with the insurance settlement as income in our PBT note. Okay, very clear on that. Any abnormal disposal of an asset, you treat the abnormal disposal and any consideration received as two completely separate economic events. So again, more items identified for disclosure in your PBT note, the settlement from the insurance companies. Right, last part. The development of the software was completed and ready for use on 28 Feb 2020, which is year end. The useful life of the new computer and sof software is estimated at eight years. Due to the nature of the application software, it can easily be transferred, be, be used by other water bottling plants. So it's quite a generic type of software for bottling plants. What is significant here is that everything was finished and ready for use by 28 February 2020, which is year end. But what that means is there won't be any depreciation or amortization on the new computer and new software in the current year because they were both only completed at year end. Right, so now that we've finished looking at the question, we can begin to look at answering part one of the required.